us free. And when we are set free, we are free indeed. Amen? That doesn't mean that the stuff doesn't come back at you. That doesn't mean that, that it's not there. And that, you know, Because, listen guys, when we get set free, we have strongholds yet in the flesh, man. That's why it's so important to be led by the spirit of man. The spirit of God in a man, right? So when we step out of him, now we're driving. When we step into him, he's driving and, and we are the passengers, right? And he is the one that we can trust because he knows what he's doing and he knows where he's going. We just have to know that God is the one that is with us and makes all things happen for us. That he is the one that has called us and set us apart for such a time as this. Um, and I really thank him for that. Um, Marv said to me, I hope you have a good message. I said, me too, because I don't have it yet. <laughs> Which I never do. Uh, sometimes I get it in advance. This is true. And I keep trying to go to 2 Peter chapter 1, and I have it back there, but I just don't feel like that's where we're supposed to go today. So I'm just going to wait on the Lord and allow him to... Um, to bring it out naturally, you know, the thing is, is when we get out of the, the driver's seat, Jesus gets in it. Right? right? right. right. So I'm just going to pray again. Father, I know in whom I believe. I know that I am persuaded that you will take care of everything that I place into your hands. So I place this service into your hands. I thank you, Father God, that each person that is here today with us, that you have something specific for each person. I pray, Father God, that you open my eyes to see what I cannot see in the natural, that you will show me, Father, in the spiritual. I pray, Father God, that you that your anointing would fall because the anointing of the Lord is upon me. To set the captives free. To bring liberty to those captives. And Lord, I just thank you that you are here with us and I love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. All God's people said amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So um, my cousins are here today from Grand Rapids. Yay, yay, yay. And um, so I was pretty happy about that. Um, the thing is, is I'm a little sad too because I'm not in town this week. But... Um, yeah, worth it. it is worth it. Thank you. Um, so I just heard something, so I'm going to bring it up right away because I want God to do what he's doing. So we have pre-service for those of you that don't know what that is. It's a, we come an hour before, hour 45 minutes before service, and we just worship God, all different types of worship music. And we're just in this room. And I don't know, there was maybe 15 of us in here this morning. Well, um, my cousin John and Isaac were able to be with us. And Isaac had said something about about 10 minutes into being in here, he could feel like this heaviness that kind of wanted, it made him feel like he wanted to sit down. And um, so I was thinking about that because um, sometimes I notice people sitting down that don't normally sit down. And um, I'm thinking, wow, that's really strange. And, you know, um, I can see myself. <laughs> that's scary. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what? I don't want to do that. <laughs> Anyways, guys, listen. Um, so... So, of course, he brought out the scripture that the spirit, of, the spirit of heaviness is driven away by joy, right? And by worship and about talking about God. And so one of the things that I ministered um, this weekend as I've been gone is, you know, that that is so true. That we have to understand that God is the one that chases away that spirit of heaviness. But you got to make your flesh... Do what the Spirit is saying. Because the Word of God says the Spirit and flesh are contrary to one another. So they will not come together. And so I was using these hand movement, movements and I was being like, yeah, you know. Um, so 
here is here you are you are so strong in the spirit of god right but this flesh is always trying to get up and get above it you know and control us so we know that there's three voices all the time there is the voice of the enemy there is the voice of god and there is our own voice you cannot cast out the flesh you can only kill the flesh the flesh is something that has to be killed and so it's really hard to do because our flesh is habits and strongholds and things like that that we um, want to control in our natural man. But we've been born again. We're new believers. We've been born again in the spirit of the living God. And that spirit man begins to grow. Amen. We get brand new hearts according to Ezekiel 36. And, and we're able to just start... Um, Becoming who we were always meant to be. That's why we know that we've been made for more, right? And so one of the things that God reminds me of often <coughs> is that we um, are made for more. And we need to think about that. So even in your day-to-day -day walk, even though we are blessed to be able to have a family weekend this weekend, you know... We still, I at least me, I, yeah, I'm sure my husband does too, um, but we're always looking. We're always doing this. You know, it's not that we're not giving our family our all because we are, but part of who we are in Christ as well is we're always looking for opportunities to share God's love, to help someone that might look like they need prayer or something like that. Why? Because we're a child of God. We have his DNA inside of us. It says in John 14 that he that Jesus is in us and we are in him and he is in the Father. We've been given everything to be able to walk in holiness and righteousness. We've been given everything that we literally need. But the only way for the spirit of the living God to grow inside of us is if we water it with the living water. With the living water. It needs to be watered. Plants will not grow. We had a hot season this summer. And uh, our plants were withering. You know, you couldn't keep them really that watered. At least up here. Sometimes we forget and we'd get here and they were like, yeah. And so sometimes when you see a Christian with heavy hands and a heavy heart, maybe they need to be watered with the word. The word is in each and every one of us. That's what the Bible teaches because Jesus is the word. And if you read the word, listen to the word, praise and worship, there's word in the praise and worship. The spirit of God will bring it up and out of us to give to somebody, right? Because you and I are, we're people, but we need to be anointed by the spirit of the living God. And that's why it says in Isaiah 61, if you would go there with me, we've been here many times. We use this in our trauma ministry um, because this is what God has put there. Is that the spirit of the Lord. Yeah, I don't have that. I'm sorry. I know, Tim, you can get that. So um, in the New King James Version, it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Who? We know originally in, in the scriptures it's Jesus. But guys, if the word of God says that Jesus is in you and we are in him, then who is the spirit of the Lord upon as well? Because we are grafted in to him. Yes. So the spirit of the Lord is upon us. It's upon us. Because the Lord has what anointed us one of the things that we pray before we minister is that the lord will anoint us not just us that are serving the people in trauma ministry but that the lord will anoint the people that are receiving the trauma ministry because they need that to be able to get beyond their fears in their flash fight we need that touch of god on them so why? Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. Guys, this just isn't in, this just isn't poor. This is poor 
in spirit. This is poor in the way that they see themselves. This is poor on so many different levels. And God has anointed us to have discernment by him what's going on with a person, right? And so the Lord is the one that gives us that discernment. He has sent us to heal up the brokenhearted. If, if there wasn't broken hearts in the world, this wouldn't be in the word. If it wasn't true, it wouldn't be there for us. But it's true. So there are so many broken people. And they don't know how to come out of that. That's where our trauma ministry, our prayer, our, our prayer rooms that are this month, um, that, what, what days are prayer rooms, the 23rd or the 28th? The 28th this month. Um, that's a place for people to come and receive prayer for specific things as well, anybody. And so, you know, this is something that we should be learning and getting in our spirit because we know that God will show and reveal brokenheartedness, that he will show it, right? Trauma is trauma. Things are happening. Guys, the one bad thing that happened this weekend is my little, our little four-year-old granddaughter was down with Dan and um, our daughter-in-law, Angel. And so we had three little grandchildren down there, a four-year-old, five-year-old, they're only four months apart and a uh, two, almost two-year-old I couldn't get in there they tried to make me pay because I was late uh, I was ministering by the time I got there anyways long story short when they got back they told us that that our little granddaughter got hurt and um, she cried for like five minutes well the child cries for five minutes you know they got hurt and uh, she wasn't screaming bloody murder she didn't have her mom you know but she was hurt and um so what we had to do is we had to work with her all day long and she was traumatized by the pain, a four-year-old traumatized. Now, I don't know if y'all, I'm pretty sure y'all have seen four-year-olds when they're traumatized, their eyes turn red and they scream and you can just see the fear and terror in their eyes. Well, this was her yesterday and um, when, when we were trying to help her, well, finally, we ended up having to take her to emergency last night, my daughter and myself. Um, Daddy couldn't go. We had so many people there, and so we, we took her, and um, it was traumatizing for me <laughs> to watch her be in such a broken state at such a young age, and we're trying to do everything that we know to comfort her and help her trust us. We've never hurt her. But to get her to trust us, you know, and to believe us that she's not going to get a shot, you know. But we have to be here because we need some help for her to get help. And it makes me think of God, you know, sometimes we're traumatized and we're just out there and we're like, I don't know that you can really help me, God. I don't know that you can heal my broken heart. I don't, I don't know. I don't trust you. I'm like petrified to let you even try and. You know, and, and so I'm, I'm looking at this in this little child that's a miracle baby to begin with. Yeah. And, and now she's hurt, and it's the first time she's ever been into the hospital. And um, God really spoke to my heart about broken people. And this is what they look like in the spirit. What I was seeing in the natural with my granddaughter is how people look in the spirit. Because they're so afraid that, 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 that they can't trust the one that loves them the most. Now, we know that God loves her the most, more than what we could ever give her in love. But in her mind, we love her. But she was not able to just trust us because of her fear and her brokenness as just a person, the way that she was born. Not that we did anything, but that's, that's just the way that it is. So God is saying to me, as I'm trying to, I mean, I'm trying, I finally looked at my daughter and I don't give up. And I looked at her because this, this kid is tough and she is strong willed. She'll wear you down. And we had a couple of them like that. But this was beyond that. It was terror. 
So as a trauma minister, it made me realize that I need to pray for her later about the trauma that she just experienced in that room when, when she's calm and grandma's playing with her or something. But it, what really showed me is what we look like in the spirit when we are broken. And it's the anointing of God that breaks the yoke of bondage off from us. He is the one that has come to set us free. And when we are set free, we are free indeed. Amen? That doesn't mean that the stuff doesn't come back at you. That doesn't mean that, that it's not there. And that, you know, Because, listen guys, when we get set free, we have strongholds yet in the flesh, man. That's why it's so important to be led by the spirit of man. The spirit of God in a man, right? So when we step out of him, now we're driving. When we step into him, he's driving and, and we are the passengers, right? And he is the one that we can trust because he knows what he's doing and he knows where he's going, right? And so it is his anointing, but it is our part to pray for that. It's our part to walk with him. It's our part to die to our flesh and to do what the spirit of God is asking us to do for others. Rather you like them or not, rather you think they deserve it or not. You know, in watching Chosen, you know, Peter was so bad at Matthew in the Chosen, even though we know that this, you know, kind of stuff is added. You could probably see that in reality because he was a tax collector and Peter was a fisherman, but Peter was putting judgment on him. But later in the series, you find, series you find out that not just was Peter at fault, but so was the other one, Matthew. Because Jesus said to Matthew, well, who hurt who first? He said, I normally wouldn't say that, but yet that's what he had to reveal to Matthew for him to see. Because he didn't know what it was like to live like true Jewish people. Because he was always over here being taken care of. He didn't understand. So through the word of the Lord, he had compassion. And his eyes were opened. So through the word of the Lord, our eyes need to be opened. So that we can have compassion for others. So that when we go in and we pray for their brokenness, the spirit of the Lord is upon us. And we are able to minister the word. And we're being used as a vessel of Jesus to help others. Amen. But we got to die to our flesh. Because we'll get in judgment. We'll get offended. We'll get hurt. Oh, it's so easy to claim these words. But to walk them. To walk them is different. We want, we say we want to see people free, but do we really want to see people free? And God says that we're anointed for the opening of the prisons to those who are bound. There's that means, I, for me anyways, it's people that are bound in the mind. They're just bound up with guilt and shame and condemnation. They're bound up from things that <coughs> they did in their past or things that were done to them. And it's time to break the chains Amen. and get them off the people because they were never intended to live that way. Amen. So we have to get that word, that fresh word. That is a fresh word right there. Jesus says that he will give us our daily bread. Amen. This is our daily bread. This is our daily bread. By the way, I like natural bread. So I like bread. So I like this because when I think about natural bread and how much I like it, I think about this bread and how much he provides and how much life it gives to our spirits. So, this is the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of God. To comfort all who mourn. To console those who mourn in Zion. To give beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning. 
the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Guys, these are recipes from heaven. These things work. When I was speaking with somebody yesterday, we were talking about some of this stuff and, you know, somebody, one of the sayings lately has been, if you have a heart of gratitude, you're not going to complain. If you have a heart of gratitude, you're not going to be critical. You're just not. You're just walking in this place. Have you ever seen any, anybody with like an anointing of gratitude on their hearts? I have recently. And boy, was that refreshing to me. Although we were ministering to her, the things that she was saying was feeding me. Because she had such a heart of gratitude for her life to be alive. She had such a heart of gratitude that God loves her. And I think sometimes we take God's love for granted and we forget that his love is never ending. As far as the east is from the west is his love. And when you travel north, he could have said as far as the north is from the south is my love. Well, eventually traveling north, you're going to be traveling south. And when you're traveling south, Sorry, north, you're going to be traveling south. And when you're traveling south, you're going to end up north. But east and west, it's never ending. You start traveling east, and it just keeps going. It never ends. That's his love for us. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon you. You. Because the spirit of God is in you. Not to be God but to surrender so that he can live through you. And then when someone says, well, I'm so thankful for you, say thank you. But then go to God and say, God, this is your thanks. This, this belongs to you. This is your glory. You're the one that set the captive free. You're the one that healed the brokenhearted. You're the one that made the leg grow. You're the one that healed the broken ankle. You're the one. It's all you. So I praise you. Amen. Some people are afraid to, to share what God has given them or even share a testimony. It's real fear. But you can overcome it. The minute that you yield to the Lord, the Lord will step in and do it. He said that he's anointed you to preach good tidings. And I believe that he's going to give us opportunity for that even more real soon. I know for me, I have to die more to my flesh. I know for me, I have to have my eyes open even wider. I know for me that I love the Lord with all my heart. But there's more that he's asking of me. That means he's asking more of you as well. And I know that, that you're faithful on so many levels, but there's levels that we're not faithful. And God will reveal those. And he'll ask us to be faithful to him. Not for man, but for him. Because he's the great I am. He's called us and set us apart for such a time as this. We're alive because we're supposed to be alive and be in this place right now. And our children are born to be in this world right now. This was their chosen time. God's got them. God's got them. It's your job to pray for them and teach them and, and have, teach them how to have a relationship with Christ by having one ourselves and letting them see it. And even our grandchildren, like our grand, us, us grandparents, we're like, man, I got to, because we lived life like our kids lived. And God took us out of the muck and the mire, many of us. And some of us grew up knowing him our whole lives, but many of us did not. But nonetheless, he's still doing a work. 
And he's only going to continue it. Amen? Amen. So we've been made for more. David, you want to come on up? Start getting ready? We've been made for more. And when we sing this today, again, I want us to remember... And I really want us to look at the lyrics because how you see yourself today, I hope that we see ourselves differently tomorrow. Not worse, but better. Like the more, going after the more. It's okay to have a bad day, but still realize that God is in your bad day and he loves you so much. So if you do have a spirit of heaviness in this place today, I'm going to encourage you to come and give it to God and then stand up and sing, I've been made for more because you have been. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and praise you. I thank you that you have made us all and we all do and have different purposes and we are the body, and each function of the body is for a purpose. So I pray that we find that purpose, God, and that we do all that we can to be in the purpose of what you have called us to do and why you created us. I pray those of us that are floundering and not really sure, I pray, Father God, that you will reveal what that purpose is. And I pray, God, that you just be with each person as as they go and be with their families or head home or whatever their plans are today, I ask God that they have favor, that they have favor. And we ask God for your protection over Jeremy as he has a fever again. And Lord, I thank you that it will be revealed why. And I pray, Father, that he will be healed in Jesus' name. And I pray, God, that he should not. I pray he will not be released until it is time and uh, that he is at peace. I pray that your peace would rest on this young man who needs peace and with the family as well. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen. amen.